No, it's not just you. They've been releasing a lot of terrible movies lately. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the worst, and later in the video, I'll tell you about some of my favorites, so you can be sure to watch those. But I'm actually gonna start this video with some of the worst, starting off with Civil War, a movie seemingly nobody enjoyed. But give me a second to explain kind of what's up with this movie and maybe why nobody liked it. This is the biggest budget movie to date from production studio A24, and they've released a lot of terrific movies. You've got a lot of cinephile types like myself that were excited for A24's biggest budget movie. And they sold it as a big budget blockbuster type movie with lots of action and it is definitely not that. So right off the bat, they made a real critical error in marketing this thing. I think because it was the biggest budget movie that they've produced, they really wanted to fill seats in the theaters. And this movie is really just one of those films that's not for everybody, like a lot of A24 productions. Furthermore, it's from director Alex Garland, who's most famous for Ex Machina and Annihilation, but he also wrote a handful of great movies like The Beach, 28 Days Later, and Sunshine, all directed by Danny Boyle. He even had a great series on FX titled Devs, and this movie doesn't feel like any of his work whatsoever, and the movie itself doesn't feel like much, which is what a lot of people did not like about it. And I'll even admit, I do not think this is a garbage movie. I think it does make kind of an interesting point. I do not think it's worth the price of admission, and I do not even think it's really worth the runtime. Essentially, you're able to see the atrocities of war on American soil. So with very few changes, the script for this movie could have taken place anywhere in the world, they decided to put it in the US. And that presentation is kind of chilling for about 10 minutes and then the movie just kind of lost me, lost everyone. It's the dumbest mission of all time that they're on. This, there's no, no there's, the, and the soundtrack is so mysteriously disconnected from what's happening. So there's all these things. And stuff like that even makes sense to me. The soundtrack's disconnected because the, photojournalist or disconnected from the war, like that's kind of what the movie is about, but it's not about much else, which is kind of strange. It costs a lot of money to make something like this. You've got to get a lot of people organized. It's a very difficult thing to pull off any kind of movie, even including one like this. And to only say the things that they said with it is kind of bizarre. I can even understand some people were upset that like it doesn't speak to current American politics. I actually liked that it didn't, that it was completely fictional, completely removed, but again, he didn't do much with it and it really feels like a waste of time. Another movie that felt like just a, a shocking waste of time was Argyle. Not only does this have a stacked cast full of people I love to watch, but it's also directed by Matthew Vaughn, who's done bangers like Kick-Ass, Stardust, X-Men First Class, Layer Cake, and The Kingsman, all movies I've enjoyed, but man, is his skills as a storyteller and a director just going in the tank. The last two Kingsman movies I thought were awful, and this latest film from him is genuinely terrible. Now, I went into this one hearing all of the terrible reviews. Nobody had anything nice to say about this movie, and I've done that countless times in my career here on YouTube, and. I often will find things to love in movies that other people hate. Longtime subscribers know this. I couldn't find anything redeeming Argyle, even though I love Sam Rockwell. Love him, he's one of my favorites. I've really enjoyed Henry Cavill, even much more so lately than I have in some of his earlier movies. This movie just doesn't do much. It's got kind of a quirky vibe that just feels awkward in every single scene and not in a good way. Also, the story that they're telling is really just kind of blase and not interesting. It's wild that this movie got made for all of the effects and the production design and even the core concept. I think they easily could have delivered a fun movie and somehow, somehow Argyle missed the mark in almost every way possible. It's been genuinely a while since I've seen a big budget movie like this, featuring a lot of people that I really like, including the director, that just falls absolutely flat. I mean, even looking at some of the footage I'm showing, it doesn't look like a flat movie, but my goodness, does it feel like one. 
Now, I'm not one to jump on the Zack Snyder hate bandwagon. Same goes for Michael Bay. There are plenty of Michael Bay movies I absolutely love and recommend here. Same goes with Zack Snyder, particularly his first few movies. I love those and strongly recommend them. But lately, my goodness, he too is just completely losing the plot. Rebel Moon, the big epic two-part thing for Netflix, is somehow flatter than Argyle. And Netflix has six movies planned for this Rebel Moon franchise. And this is something I've been saying Netflix should have done for a long time, investing in these big properties where they can have multiple movies that people want to watch for years and years. And it looks like they tried to do that with Rebel Moon, but my goodness, are these movies boring. Now, visually, they're pretty stunning. I mean, the trailers look awesome, but the delivery, the characters, the story, all about as flat and two-dimensional as they can be because Zack Snyder's not a very good storyteller. He makes some visually stunning movies, but here he's essentially taking Seven Samurai, which has been turned into an ungodly amount of other movies, including The Magnificent Seven. Hell, there's even a 1980s space opera kind of trying to do a Star Wars thing. It's titled Battle Beyond the Stars. It's the exact same plot as Rebel Moon, and it's more entertaining because of how silly and cheesy and dated it is. Rebel Moon is just kind of a disappointment of a big budget action movie, and honestly, I'm gonna be surprised if Netflix invests in the rest of the story. Now we'll jump to The Beekeeper, a movie that I thought was really stupid, but a movie that I also enjoyed, not thoroughly, but Several times throughout, I thought the movie was actually pretty fantastic, and it's actually growing kind of a loyal fan base. I will be surprised if we don't get a legit sequel to The Beekeeper. But this is from writer-director David Ayer, who is just completely like hit and miss. He's got some real turds in his filmography, like Suicide Squad, but he's also got some bangers like Fury, and he's maybe most famous for writing Training Day. But The Beekeeper is kind of a shameless attempt at a John Wick ripoff. Uh, not just because it's a martial arts movie, those are a dime a dozen, but the whole beekeeper lore that they try to build out in this movie is not only unsuccessful, but it's clearly an attempt at like a John Wick type thing. I would even say all the purple neon lights and everything you see in some of the sequences, it's, again, kind of shameless. And the plot here is, I mean, hilariously stupid. But that's kind of what works about this movie. I mean, Jason Statham has been in some really dumb movies. For instance, the Transporter movies are incredibly stupid. I mean, they get dumber as they go on, but they're entertaining to watch. The Beekeeper fits in a similar wheelhouse, just not quite as good as some of his others, in my opinion, and certainly not as good as John Wick. But the one that takes the cake for me has got to be Madam Web. I know people loved to hate on this movie, and I actually avoided watching it for quite a while because I just didn't see much value in it. But the reviews on this are so abysmal, it actually skates into comedic territory, so I had to check it out. And I gotta say, this is not even worth watching for comedy purposes. I'm not really sure what this movie is supposed to be, but this is a train wreck of a production. This movie costs over $100 million, <laughs> does not look like it at all. I mean, it doesn't even look like a made-for-TV movie, like a Netflix original. It looks lower budget than that. It literally looks like they're not even trying with some of the concepts, the delivery, the camera placement is wild sometimes. <laughs> like, she's a paramedic, she's doing CPR on somebody, the camera's spinning around. You can't even see the person she's doing CPR on. But at the same time, they spent a ton of money. I mean, some people lined their pockets with this movie and they line their pockets with your money if you pay to, to see this thing in the theater. Meaning the studio knew this was a garbage movie and they released it anyway, not just released it, they spent quite a bit of money marketing it. And I've already said, I typically will try to find things I love in movies that other people hate. So I went into this one hoping to find some like comedic thread or something to hold on to. There's nothing worth watching in this movie. And she's not a good actor either. Can we just drop it with Dakota Johnson? Like, I realize her parents were famous, but like, she delivers lines like a normal person would say them. She doesn't do anything to enhance her performance in any movie I've ever seen her in. This being one of the worst, and it's because the movie itself is just so mismanaged and <laughs> like, it's awful. Her superpower is also this like, special clairvoyance 
they spend so long setting it up. There are at least three scenes, I think more, where she's like kind of figuring out something's weird, where she's seeing things twice. It's like, set it up, move on, do something cool with it. It's just, I mean, I, it, it has been a long time since I've seen a movie just this poor. And I watch a lot of terrible movies, but this one literally has nothing to grab onto, not just for me. I can't imagine like, even if you like Dakota Johnson, this thing is a disappointment. And especially if you like Spider-Man, this is a silly looking movie and not in a good way. I will be shocked if they make any more of these. With the amount of movies I watch, I'm actually kind of impressed that this movie's nearly two hours long and doesn't have anything in it that, that redeems it remotely. Now, I've got four movies on this list that came out in 2024 that I think thoroughly enjoyed and we're going to talk about him here in a minute but next up i've got one that's kind of in limbo for me right now because i'm really not sure how much i love this movie furiosa now i am a die hard mad max fan and absolutely loved fury road i think the action in it was not only interesting unique and visually stunning but it was meticulously edited together and it's just a brilliant work of action it's a masterpiece of an action movie Furiosa has a similar production style, takes place in the exact same world, and I love this movie for that. It also features some incredible action sequences, some of the best of the entire year. There's no doubt about that. They too are meticulously put together. The movie as a whole though, I'm not sure I'm in love with it nearly as much as Fury Road. Now, when I first saw it in the theater, it's loud, I'm excited, it's almost been 10 years since Fury Road came out, so I'm just, I'm just super jazzed and I loved it. I've watched it twice now and it's just not quite as magical as the first. This is another one people kind of loved to hate on. Anytime there's a big action movie that features a female lead and it flops, which this one definitely flopped at the box office, we're gonna talk more about that in a minute. Some people just love to jump on the fact that you can't put women in action movies, which is just like patently false. It was stupid when Jennifer Lawrence said it. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. You bitch! It's stupid when other YouTubers say it. There had been countless amazing action movies with female leads. So that's not what's holding this movie back, but something with the pacing, it kind of promises more than it delivers. It, it sets up this epic world with wars going on. And I do enjoy some of the political elements of Mad Max. You're at the end of civilization. It feels very much like the beginning of civilization at times. There's these different factions propping up and having wars with each other. All of that stuff is interesting, but Furiosa sort of sets itself up as a war movie, not just in the trailers, but at a certain point in the movie. And then it just never quite delivers on that. And I gotta say, I felt disappointed multiple times throughout the movie, but this is one I will be revisiting again because I love Fury Road so much. All right, now we're gonna be talking about Late Night with the Devil, one of the coolest horror flicks to come out all year. Before that, if you're a big movie fan and you wanna show it off to other people, consider getting one of these shirt designs. If you don't like this They Live design, which is my personal favorite right now, I've got a bunch of others over at darrenvandam.com shop. The shirts are stupid soft. They are 100% cotton. They might shrink a little bit, but they're a fitted design. So if you like your shirts loose, definitely get at least one size up. It's a great way to support the channel and show off the movies that you love. But speaking of movies that you love, I loved Late Night with the Devil, and a lot of other people did too. This is kind of a smash hit in terms of low budget horror movies this year. It's also one of the most unique found footage movies I've maybe ever seen. Certainly most unique one I've seen in a <clears throat> well over a decade. It's actually set up as a like late 1970s, early 80s, late night talk show, like a Johnny Carson type thing. In fact, they even referenced Johnny Carson and this fictional host is in tight, tight competition with Johnny Carson. That's kind of the basic setup. And he has some wild guests on his show one night. And the cool thing about this movie is after a brief setup, the entire movie is one episode of this late night talk show and it gets wild. Like it definitely delivers. And 
It's just interesting. There's nothing else quite like it. It keeps the ball moving. It's entertaining. It's a little funny at times. If you're familiar with The Amazing Randy and some of the stuff he's done, there's a character very much like him. It's all integrated really well and just makes for a fantastic late night horror movie. If you're in the mood for such a thing this month, definitely consider renting Late Night with the Devil, or you can go check it out on Shudder or AMC+. Plus. By the way, the full list of movies is always in the top pinned comment. I also list out where you can stream these movies here in the US, as well as Canada, the UK, and Australia. Famous actor Dev Patel has made his directorial debut with Monkey Man, a movie he wrote and directed and got Jordan Peele to produce. Now this is a John Wick ripoff that absolutely kills. It's awesome. It's clearly inspired by John Wick in multiple ways, but it also has its own unique flavor. This takes place in India. Dev Patel is infusing it with loads of Indian culture. And I'll also say, this is a mild spoiler, but this movie has like the most appropriate integration of like a group of trans people I've ever seen in a movie and that's not me just trying to like prop it up like it actually makes sense why there's a bunch of trans people in this movie at a certain point and it serves the story more than once I thought it was pretty clever how he integrated that and honestly it probably helped him get this movie made or at least helped him get more money for it and the movie is completely unhinged now it can be a bit slow paced leading up to the first action sequence and I'll even say the movie really revolves around two action sequences and only two but they're very prolonged and they sort of daisy chain together in multiple sequences leading to like two 20 plus minute long action packed just the movie's fantastic if you love john wick you've got to see this one it's currently included on peacock or you can rent it but odds are in another month or two you're gonna see it popping up on major streaming services like prime video i'm not sure where it's gonna end up but you will see it popping up again soon for sure easily one of the best action movies of the year now before we get to my favorite movie on this list, I do want to mention Dune Part 2, which I'm surprised how much I enjoyed these Dune movies, despite the fact that I expected to like them. I really love the director's work. I've enjoyed all of his films, and I still, Dune exceeded my expectations. The sequel exceeded my expectations on the first. And I love them. I've watched both parts multiple times now. I find them to be thoroughly entertaining. I think all of the effects are done just to the nines. I wish we got more big budget movies like these versus these like Disney ones where everything's filmed with a screen behind you. Dune something special. I'm not going to go on about it. I've already talked about it in videos, but I didn't want to pass on it. It's easily one of the best of the year. And then one of my favorites that I've not talked about here on the channel yet is The Fall Guy. Now, I'm a big Ryan Gosling fan. I've enjoyed him in movies for years. I think he's genuinely one of the best comedy actors working today. We don't get a lot of great comedies anymore, but when this guy decides to do one, he nails it, and this is a fantastic action comedy. Now, speaking of John Wick, this is from director David Licht, who co-directed the first John Wick movie and then split off to do his own thing, including Deadpool 2, Atomic Blonde, and Bullet Train, The Fall Guy being one of my favorites he's done so far. And I'll say this movie's pretty wholesome as far as action comedies go. I've watched this with my kids who are fairly young and they thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed it. I would put this in a similar category to Back to the Future. I'm not gonna say it's as good as Back to the Future, but it's as wholesome, more so maybe even. There's really no incest stuff in The Fall Guy like there is with Back to the Future. I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go. But it's a fun action movie that is actually about making movies. It's got rom-com elements. It literally has something for everybody and it's glued together well. It's not this like chaotic mess. It's just a fun, well-rounded movie. It feels even a bit old fashioned, but kind of like in the best way. It's also got a lot of humor that revolves around the making of movies that I thought was really funny. I could see where some of that would not connect with other folks. Now, I'm not saying The Fall Guy is one of the greatest films of the year, but it's certainly one of the more fun and entertaining movies released in quite a while. 
I also hope we get more movies in this category coming out over the years. This one too kind of flopped at the box office, but I get it. You know, it's easy to watch these movies at home. They make them available at home way too quickly nowadays. I mean, all of these movies I'm talking about are already available to rent at home at the very least. And the incentive to go to the movie theater is just plummeting. I mean, you've got to sit there with people who don't have any manners. They don't know how to turn their phone off to save their life. You're going to overpay for what you would pay if you just wait a couple more weeks. I mean, Furiosa is a great example. I've waited almost 10 years to see that movie. It went from the theater to home within four weeks. It's kind of ridiculous and I'm really losing reasons to go to the movie theater, especially considering I've got one here in the house. But that is the list. Please, this episode, let me know what some of your most hated movies of the year so far are. Odds are I'll check them out at some point, but I'll keep making these videos as long as y'all keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special worst list and you will see me on the next one.